The past five years I have spent teaching and critiquing students' art have taught me that beginners are really all just making the exact same mistakes when it comes to creating realistic art. I'd be critiquing 10 or 20 students' art in a row and I just felt like I was repeating the same advice over and over again. So if you are actually able to avoid these few common mistakes, you'll be 80% of the way to creating super realistic artwork. But improving and fixing mistakes can feel daunting, overwhelming and can actually feel like a really negative experience. I don't want it to feel like this. Learning and improving should be fun. So I have designed fun challenges for you to try which will help you fix your art mistakes and have fun doing it. Each challenge will help you improve at a really crucial fundamental part of art. So let's get started. The first mistake, and probably the most common mistake, no matter what you're drawing or what medium you are using, is having the wrong proportions and an inaccurate sketch. If you start a drawing with a bad sketch, then you are setting yourself up for failure. Having good proportions are crucial for creating an awesome piece of art. But proportions can be one of the hardest things to fix and it definitely won't happen overnight. Improving your proportions will take time and multiple attempts, so don't give up if your sketch isn't perfect first time. Now to help you get the ball rolling with perfecting your sketches, here is a challenge to try out. The seven day sketching challenge is a fun way to focus on critiquing and improving your sketches. Every day for a week, create a sketch outline for a drawing and just the sketch outline. You can either draw the exact same reference each day to see how much you improve from your first attempt to day seven, or you can draw a different reference each day. But I do recommend choosing references within the same subject matter. For example, if you want to improve your portrait proportions, then pick portrait references. To do this challenge, I do recommend printing off your reference and to draw your sketch the same size as that printed reference. Take your time and try to do your sketch as accurate as you can. Then once you have finished, you'll want to overlay your drawing on top of your reference in a way that you are able to see how your sketch and your reference are different. The key is just to find a way to compare your sketch with the reference. On day one, when you've finished your first sketch, compare your images and note down three areas of improvement. For example, if you are improving your portrait sketches, write down three weaknesses of your portrait sketch. Some examples of weaknesses could be, um, I drew the eyes too close, or the face is too wide, or the nose is too big or too long. Then on day two, create your next sketch either by redrawing the same reference or a different one, and the key is to keep in mind while sketching the critiques you noted down from yesterday's sketch. Then compare your sketch and reference again. You'll want to see whether you improved on your weaknesses and then also do the critique process over again by noting down three more things you need to improve on. They can be the same things as you noted down the day before if you feel like your sketch didn't improve in those areas. Then keep in mind your critique from day two when you're doing your third sketch and so on. The benefit of this challenge is that you are constantly looking at your sketch, identifying how your sketch could be improved and then actively working on those things rather than aimlessly creating sketch after sketch. Before we move on to the next mistake where I go through a really fun challenge to help you with your flat drawings, I want to tell you about a free guide I created for you to help you improve your art. Now I remember starting out being so frustrated with my art because I felt like I was doing drawing after drawing and not seeing any improvement for a long time. I was putting in loads of hours but my skills just weren't improving at all. Over the years though I have learned exactly why my drawings just kept looking the same and how I needed to fix that problem so that I could start seeing rapid improvement in my art. And now I've turned all of this information into a 10 step system for you for free so that you can also end the frustration and create art that you are proud of. You can get my 10 steps to better artwork guide by clicking the link at the top of the description or by clicking the card up above. 
Another big mistake I see many artists suffer with is having flat looking artwork. This could be your problem if your art just doesn't look eye-catching or pop out of the page. If your art doesn't look 3D, then give this challenge a go because what you need to work on to fix this mistake is your values. Value is super important to giving your art that 3D look. You want a drawing to have a full range of light and dark values in order to create art that really stands out. A mistake many artists make is being too scared to go in with extreme values like really dark shadows and bright highlights and so that art just looks lacklustre and remains in the middle range of values. So to fix your flat drawings you need to work on improving your range of values. For this challenge you'll need toned paper and the challenge is to create a drawing only using a black and white pencil on that toned paper, nothing else. The tone paper you use should be a mid-tone value so that your drawing already has those mid-tone values covered. Then it is up to you to just focus on getting in those more extreme values. You can use a black pencil to get in the shadows and the white pencil for the highlights. This is good as often we use white paper and canvases so we don't necessarily have to add in highlights. But with this challenge you have to actually identify and work on shading in the highlights as well as your shadows. The benefit to just working in black and white as well is that you are not distracted with lots of different colours. You really can just focus on your values. Colour selection is another really tricky aspect of art. Picking the right colours for your artwork can feel so daunting and it can be easy to use the wrong shade or hue for your drawings and paintings. In order to pick better colours, it is really helpful to know colour theory and how colours mix and impact each other. Once you understand how colours influence each other, you can more easily pick the most accurate colours for your art. This next challenge will work for any medium, but it's super fun to do with paint in particular. The challenge is to create a full-on piece of artwork using only three primary colours, red, yellow and blue, and then black and white to lighten and darken your colours. It is actually possible to create any colour you want with just these five colours, so it's a great way to play around with colour and experiment without feeling overwhelmed by having loads of different colours or pencils to choose from. You can make this challenge as simple or difficult as you want. You could just try a really simple study or go all out and paint a portrait with a landscape in the background and maybe even a pet by its side. It really is up to you. The only rule is just to use those five colours. The benefit of doing this challenge is that you get to understand colour theory a little bit more so that when it comes to picking your colours and figuring out what colour you need to add in to make your colours more accurate, you can be confident with the colours you pick. Because it can be intimidating when you have a set of hundreds of different colours, you really can learn more by using less. It will make you a much better artist if you know the ins and outs of colour theory and getting hands on with your colours is the best and most fun way to learn. Often I see beginners rush their art or simply call a drawing finished before it really is. It can be really challenging when you're a beginner to know when to call a drawing done and the idea of overworking and ruining all of your hard work can be terrifying. Rushing is also a problem many artists face, especially when it comes to drawing things that you just find really difficult or boring. It can be so tempting to quickly rush over these areas so that you can spend more time on the exciting bits. But the downside of calling your drawing finished too soon is that you miss out on the opportunity to make your art so much better without much extra work. My coloured pencil drawings are a good example of this. Often the middle stage of these drawings can look really messy and actually quite underwhelming. Now it's not that there's anything wrong with this drawing, it's just that it isn't finished yet. An extra couple of hours can make a world of difference and suddenly the drawing looks way more realistic. If I had stopped earlier, it wouldn't have been a very good drawing, but a bit of extra time and your art can really become something awesome. So maybe the problem with your art is that it isn't bad, it just isn't finished. Maybe you are stopping at that middle stage. Okay, time for the challenge that will help fix this. I call this challenge the progressive time challenge. This challenge involves you picking something to draw, it can be anything, and drawing that exact same thing 
three times with three different time allocations. I'm sure you've seen challenges like this all over YouTube by now, like the classic 10 second, one minute, 10 minute challenge. But for mine, the time limits are going to be a bit bigger because the aim of this challenge is not to get you to draw faster, but to actually spend more time on your drawings. I want you to see how much you can improve your drawings just by spending some extra time on your art. Now write down the average amount of time you normally spend on a drawing. Is it 30 minutes, an hour, maybe five hours? Whatever it is, write it down. This is going to be your starting point. So if your first drawing, just draw it as you normally would. Then for the next drawing, you'll want to draw the same thing, but set a longer time limit. If you spend 30 minutes on a drawing, which really isn't very long if that is you, try one hour next. Or if you already spend five hours on a drawing, maybe just lengthen it to six or seven hours. See what a difference that bit of extra time makes to your art. Then for the final drawing, lengthen that time even more. Instead of one hour, try two hours. Or instead of seven hours, go for 10 hours. With each drawing, you should see more detail and realism because you aren't rushing your art and you actually have more time to observe your reference. Now those are four challenges that will help you fix your mistakes. Now the last bonus challenge is going to help you with your confidence. Often we are our own worst critics and it can be so easy to get lost in how much we want to fix that we actually forget how far we have come. That is why I recommend doing the draw this again challenge. This is where you redraw something that you've drawn in the past. This will really show you how far you've come and how much you have learned. It can be really fun to make this an annual challenge so that you can keep track of your artistic growth each year. Let me know in the comments which challenge you are excited to try the most and remember to download your free copy of the 10 steps to better artwork guide to learn what steps you need to take to draw more realistic art and start creating art you are proud of today. To access the free guide just click the link at the top of the description or click the end card here and I'll see you in the next video.